Oi, you know what time it is. You're tuned in listening to the Dry That Aussie Metal Guy. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his content when it drops. And remember, stay brutal, you mad dogs. Roof. Bloody chill. G'day, legends. How the bloody hell are you going? Wherever you are in the world today, tonight, it's a great pleasure that I'm having a chat with Jackson, basis for Chuff, who are due to release their dim-witted, amoral exploitation, 27th of April, through Dead Set Records and Artists First. Um, some of you may have already caught the film clip, Yogurt Cups, the story of one man's tale to get a fucking bag of weed. Jackson, cheers <laughs> for joining me, brother. <laughs> no worries, dude. Thanks for having me. No, absolute pleasure, man. First off, can you tell me kind of where Chuff all started from dude so pretty much jack and adam the drummer and guitar pl- uh guitar player used to play in another band cosmic kahuna and over covid they said you know fuck it let's do something you know so they got together started a grind band couple other dudes you know in and out um then they asked me i played in party vibes with jack before as well okay um so then yeah we got in and then we'd seen jake play uh, vocals in his other bands and shit. So we're like, we've got to get this cunt in for sure. And yeah, pretty much all through COVID, you know, early 2020, maybe we were just um, jamming at the drummer's factory just every weekend, fucking illegally, you know? Yeah. Well, what, what was that do. time like, dude? Cause Melbourne, like some people may or may not know, we in Australia know that Melbourne was the most locked down city in the fucking world. So to be able to. Oh, it was hectic, man. It, it was... definitely earned the name, the outlaw grind. <laughs> yeah, fucking oath, fucking oath. It worked out well that the drummer's got a factory, you know, in the fucking um, industrial state in Collingwood, like in Melbourne. So the yep. noise wasn't an issue. No one was fucking ringing up and complaining. It was just like fucking the whole time I was driving. Like I live probably forty k's away from the city, and we okay. had like a ten k radius or whatever. You weren't allowed to leave, so it was just like fuck. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Nothing yeah. ever happened, but fucking, it was so weird. And is that kind of the time that you've done the the demo, was it? Or yeah, yeah, yep. exactly. So, what was it like, fucking getting in there and making that demo, dude? Smashing that one out. Tell me a little bit about that whole process. Oh, it was sick, man. It was sick. Yeah. You know, none of us had done anything for fucking ages. You know, a good few years. We went in, recorded it in Squizzy's garage, actually. So it was Fuck we yeah. were first cunts to come into his garage. So it was good watching him trying to figure it all out while we're watching us trying to figure it all fucking out. You know good couple of days yeah it, it definitely give you a good idea to what was in fucking stall you know coming up with this forthcoming ep as 100%. well kind of get in there get it out and just fucking get the ball rolling on it all yeah straight up dude 100 percent. and you've been playing a shit ton of shows lately eh? fucking oath we yeah man just played our 40th show in 12 months wow dude and then you so got we fucking a- Smashed it out as much as we could, you know what I mean? Book shows here and there. In the end, we're turning heaps down because we were just fucking, nah, can't. We got this on, we got that on. Well, how's that been being in Melbourne, dude? I've been over there um, a couple of times, man, since it's everything's open. But, like, it just seems to be shows every weekend, man. Oh, it always. Be, <laughs> it must always. Everyone was just frothing at the bit. You know, it was already a great live <clears throat> music scene, but especially so now that everyone had that fucking stage where they couldn't play any shows and then getting back into it now, it's like, fuck yeah, let's smash it. You know, what were some of the things you kind of missed about not being able to play in that time, dude? Just all the new bands, man. Yeah. When we when we started, we wanted to get into state as quick as we could. So, like, not last March, the yeah, last March, sorry. Yep. Um, yeah, we headed up to through New South Wales and Queensland. And I was trying to book the shows and I was like, Man, I don't even know what fucking bands are playing or what goes on right now, you know. <laughs> so it's been good to just slot back into where it used to be, you know what I mean? Get a feel of what's going on. Yeah, well, it is a crazy fucking metal scene just here in australia and alone to keep up with it because the talent oh, we have here in australia with the bands like you know from punk to fucking metal is just insane you couldn't keep up with it like i have trouble keeping up with it and i'm like right into it man and i yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what i mean no nah, fucking oath dude fucking oath definitely anything you want out there it's yeah, all there. Anything you want. And then up this weekend, man, you've got the Flipping the Bird show, dude. That one looks fucking cool, man. Yeah, that's sick. That's pl- sick, man. Playing we, with a we... whole stack of good bands, dude. Yeah, fucking oath, man. Fucking oath. We played last year. So when we got asked to play again this year, we were like, fucking oath, let's do it. And then the lineup got announced and we were like, 
fucking let's do it, cunt. You know, it's fucking, it's sick. <laughs> Yeah, food stalls, metal, yeah. tattoos. What more could you bloody want, dude? Bro, exactly right. What more could you want? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you even own... um, there's a heap of metal bands on the courtyards, the stage. Oh, I've seen that. They got year. Carnal Viscera, man. Like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. going to be wild. They're a top band, man. Top yeah, fucking. Tom's fucking a good home. guy, man. Go smash a couple of fucking chuffers with him, dude. Tell him I said yeah, good day. Yeah, yeah. Tell him I said good day, man. He'll have fucking it's Billy in... there. He'll be ready to roll. Yeah, it's in the books, mate. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> Yeah, man, he's fairly, what's at 9.30 over there on the courtyard, so definitely catch them ones as well, yeah, man. Yeah. There's a huge sundowner, dude. There's so many religious observant, man. There's, it's going to be a killer show. So Fucking oath. Yeah, anyone get along to that one as well. Tell me a little bit about working on this EP, man. Like, When did you start working on it? Tell me all about you know the songwriting process, the making of it all. So, yeah, started writing songs pretty much when we all, like, got together as two or four of us once we'd locked in and recorded the demo started writing songs for the ep yep we just fucking smashed it out dude we wrote we've probably still got like 20 25 30 songs in the bank sort of thing that we haven't put out yet we recorded this ep last february actually at singing bird where flipping the bird is held um yeah recorded it last february but then fucking um you know, just all bullshit. For the people to oh, look so at. Sick, yeah. That's so sick. The, who done the artwork for that one, man? That was uh Nano from Black Reno. Oh, nice man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. And they're we, a top bunch of guys, eh? Like, oh, absolute legends, man. We just sent him the EP and said, come up with something and he'd fucking come back with that. And none of us had that concept in mind, like sort of blue, um blueprint sketchy sort of shit, but fuck it sick. It's yeah, mad. dude, it, it come out really, really bloody well. How many tracks? Tell me a little bit about the track listings and shit like that, man. Because I didn't eight get tracks. fucking great eight tracks, man. I didn't eight get a great listing. Tried to write, tried to do the track listing as good as we can as like a side A and B. Like each side's got an intro and a, like a long song for the end for the last song on that side. Yep. Um, we don't actually have a side A and B. We've got a side one and A, no B sides, mate. Damn, that's going to look sweet on vinyl, dude. <laughs> yeah, 10 inch, 10 inch. So it's going to stand out, man. Yeah, and that's going through artists first as well. Yes, yeah. There we go. Yeah, they're they're a good bunch of people to be working with as well. And the, the Dead Set Records, of course, through King Parrot, man. Killer Connection, man. Shit, that merch, I've got it up here now, dude. That yeah, looks fucking yeah. sweet, dude. It's coming out sick, man. The shirt design with the um, back print as well. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, man, I'll see if I can get it up for everyone to have a fucking look at here, man. Yeah, sick. There we go. That's what we're looking for, people, when you get your pre-orders. Man, there's yes. a, I, need, I need a new fucking muller, man. That yeah, would be fucking bloody oh. perfect for me, man. Get it in, mate. Get it in. <laughs> That's perfect, man. So so where did you record at, man? Uh, Singing Bird Studios in Frankston. In Frankston? Yeah, yeah. With a young dude, his name's Max Dangerfield, plays drums in uh, Goat Shaman, sick as fucking sludgy doom band. Nice. Um, yeah, he mixed it, and then we sent it over to Brad Boatwright to get mastered pretty much where every cunt does. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the film clip, man? That's a fucking... Oh, it's so that's sick. That's a cracking fucking film clip, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So original, so Jake's got a friend. The director is his friend, and he goes, he's got a fucking short film idea he's had for ages about, you know, exactly what happens. You know, a dude wants to get his weed, he can't get it. Fucking goes through all sorts of fucking magic doors where all sorts of shits happening, and we were just like, man, you got to see if you can let us put our stamp on this, hey. Yeah. But he was in charge of all of it. You know what I mean? We just said go crazy. Um, but yeah, it turned out fucking so much better than I thought it was going to. It, it did, man. It's a fucking, it's a, it's a cracking film clip. And then I like how he's like managed to, in the end, he's got his weed. He's like fucking blood soaked face and shit gets <laughs> out. Packs his fucking billy. We've all done this. And then we've all done this, not with a blood soaked face necessarily. Yeah, yeah, some, <laughs> some of us have maybe, but you got, you got the weed out. And there's fuck. <laughs> Light is out of gas. And then you, yeah. you're just, you're almost waiting for a second part to that film clip to kick in. So there's fuck. Yeah, yeah, you almost yeah. need him to pick up on his fucking journey to go get his lighter or something next. Yeah, you nah. almost wanted to, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah gold. dude no absolute gold man look jackson what are you using for bass man tell me a little bit about the setup you're using at the moment for this 
Uh, so I've got an Edwards Les Paul Jr. base made in Japan. It's fucking sick. Um, run it straight into a compressor and a dark glass um, into an orange base terror, but live just de ice straight out of the dark glass and it's fucking sounds massive, man. I like to have a big, chunky, grindy base tone. Yeah, fuck yeah. I think the interviews need to be presented by Orange today. I interviewed a, a oh, band from America today and they were using an Orange setup as well, dude. Um, so yeah. can't fucking go wrong, man. Um, you got a favorite track off the album, man? Yeah, I do. Mortuary Rat. Oh, yeah, dude. Killer. Mortuary Rat. Yeah, it's fucking sick, actually. It's about um, our singer Jake writes all the fucking lyrics and shit. And he just he knows all sorts of wild fucking shit from all sorts of podcasts and that. <laughs> It's about some fucking chick that got um, neck feel fucking morgue she was looking at and shit. And she's done like all crazy interviews, like real open with it and all that sort of shit. So there's quotes and stuff in there about what she said and that. But it's like quick one minute track. Yeah. Just starts with blast beats intro. Can't go wrong. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah, it. dude. Fucking oath, man. I'm looking forward to getting my hands on this one. It is Dim Witted Immoral Exploitation. You can catch the guys around. They'll be playing a shit ton of shows around at the place. Mate, do you have any last words, shout outs, thank yous, or anything else you'd like to add in there, my friend? Shout out Dead Set Records. Pre order this shit, you fucking idiots. That's it. Everybody get it. Grab some chuffa. Grab some chuff. Dim witted amoral exploitation 27th of April through Dead Set Records and Artists First. Get your pre orders. Get your nice little fucking muller. Some sick ass vinyl and some killer shirts as well. Cheers, Jackson. You take it easy, my friend. Cheers, mate. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Oi, you're tuned in to Jai That Aussie Metal Guy, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his sick content. And remember, stay brutal, you legend.